a long, long time ago, far up in the northern regions, in a little place called Sweden, lived a tiny little girl, or well, a woman really, and her name was Ellie. Ellie came from a long line of creative people, and she herself was a very creative soul as well. She liked to transform into monsters and creatures and beings from other planets. But most of all, she wanted to become a cat. An Egyptian cat. A queen and a goddess. And that's where this story begins. The first chapter is all about Ellie talking about how she wants to transform into her favorite animal, the cat. She also says she has two of them. And she continues to talk about other cat experiences, like the ones where she created this amazing cat face on a Some Devil Effects workshop. She goes on and on to talk about it, and she also lets us know that there are a lot of nice links in the description if you are interested in those workshops. As the story unfolds, we learn that the inspiration from this look comes from an image like this. But Ellie has to this day no idea who created this original look, and she begs to anyone who knows to let her know in the comments. The skills required to create this amazing transformation are pretty moderate. It will take some time to prepare, and the application might also take a while, but it will not cost you much. As we turn the page to the next chapter, we are taken back in time to when Ellie was preparing for this amazing cat look by smearing liquid latex onto a foam doll head to create a nice base, almost like a fake bald cap on which she could apply those nice cat ears. But danger lured around the corner as Ellie had to use a pair of scissors to cut out this shape that folds into an amazing little ear. Incidentally, Ellie found that she can make another ear by using the first one as a template to make sure they look pretty much the same. Her hand trembled as she picked up the gun, the gun containing glue, which she used to attach those paper ears onto that dried up latex on the doll head. She had heard a rumor from far, far away that cat ears in Swedish would be pronounced cat -ern. But since Ellie herself was from Sweden and spoke Swedish, she didn't think much about that when she mixed liquid latex with baking flour to create that gooey paste that she smeared all over those ears, creating a nice smooth surface. She went on for many a minutes to keep smoothing those ears with additional latex and build up a nice latex structure all around those paper ears. Ellie envisioned a realistic looking cat ear, so she went on to cut out a piece from a foam sheet and the shape of this little semi-half moon thingy. She curled it up, attached it to the side, like a little wrinkle that you would have on a real cat ear. To ensure everything looked just the same, she continued to smear out that latex paste onto the newly applied pieces. As she continued, she switched to finer and finer instruments to get the details just right. the sun set and darkness swept in over the village, Ellie went to bed and left the ears to dry overnight. As she returned the next day, rejuvenated with a lot of energy, she continued the hard work of smearing that latex onto the ears, but this time it was all to create the same texture all over, 
and also to add additional details in the form of wrinkles in the inner sides of the cat ears. As Ellie felt the shapes of those ears were just perfect, she was planning to turn to science to create some teeth. Our story continues as Ellie has poured Ellimorph plastic into hot water to be able to shape it the way she wants. As she remembers there is all kinds of instructions on how to get your hands on Ellimorph plastic down in the descriptions of this very video. With a flat Ellimorph piece, she then used that dangerous pair of scissors to cut out small, small cat-like teeth and trimmed them down to perfect length. As planning was not Ellie's strong suit, she forgot to go to the market and get herself some new liquid latex. So she had to use another one in another color, but it's still just liquid latex paste as usual. She sunk the teeth into that upper lip piece. One by one they went in. She then padded the top of those teeth with additional latex just to make sure they would sit in place. She then went in with a tiny, tiny tool to clear out any excess latex from those teeth. Using an electronic device called a microwave oven, she managed to dry up and cure that upper lip piece very fast, and she peeled it off and applied flour as she did that to make sure that latex didn't stick to itself. Then of course, it was time to attack that nose. How to create a nice, nice cat nose. The process was the same. Vast amounts of liquid latex paste and eager fingers shaping, creating and sculpting. Which by the way was Ellie's favorite thing to do in the world. Besides petting her cats. Working with all those small details of the cat nose required a lot of Ellie's patience and concentration. And again, to make sure the texture looked just right, Ellie dabbed with her tiny little fingers onto that latex paste to give it a really good cat-like texture. She then went on with the forehead to create some cat-like brows. Was this cat going to look angry? Yes, a little bit angry. Or maybe it was just determined. Either way, Ellie again used her fingers, dipped in liquid latex to be able to shape that paste as she wished. Now Ellie knew she was nearing the end of all this preparation, but there still was the need for some cheekbones. Now Ellie's creation really started to look like a cat, but something was missing. It felt a bit bland. But as we turn the page, we see that Ellie is now addressing that by adding color, beginning with a beige tone, covering all of those ears, and then going inside the ears to give it that realistic cat look, and making sure she really blends those colors in together. She didn't want any harsh transition, it was supposed to be smooth. In her dream this was a white mummified cat, so she needed to add additional white tones on the outside of those ears as well. 
painting skills had always been a part of Ellie's family and she knew she had to bring in a darker tone for added depth and also to bring out those wrinkles and all those little details. She went into the ear, make them look deeper and she also smeared that brown color on the edges and into all those little wrinkles to give them that extra little dimension of depth. And just as her grandmother had taught her, she went in with a larger brush to make things a little more fussy and blurred to make them look more natural and less painted on. With her knowledge of cats, Ellie knew that the inside of the cat ears had to be shiny, so she added a little bit of varnish to bring out a little bit of shine. But just as she applied that varnish, she was interrupted by yelling and screaming in the streets. People were promoting and shouting that Amber Gorse Hard had created amazing monsters on her Instagram. So the people were told to follow. After all that commotion in the town square, Ellie once again focused on the coloring and the painting. And this time it was all about those tiny cat teeth, beige tones, and the gum tones mixed together to create that awesome tooth prosthetic. It was all surrounded by brown tones to darken it down and the teeth as well got that very useful varnish treatment to give them some extra shine. As we head into the next chapter, Ellie is protecting her little brows so they won't be ripped out with the skin adhesive when she removes her cat face. Then came Ellie's favorite thing in the world, putting on a bald cap and she knew she was so much better than everyone in the world on doing this. It always went exactly her way and nothing ever went wrong. Several days later, Ellie had put on that bald cap just the way she wanted it and it was time to make it sit there tightly. So she added skin adhesive along the edges just to make sure. Ellie had always wanted the beautiful mustache that her father had, so she tried to make her own. Only she used that little mouthpiece she did with the cat teeth. That's a great looking mustache, she thought as she continued to apply more of that gluey stuff onto her head. She also applied it in the different pieces to make them stick really, really well. Went on just like that, and all of a sudden, Ellie was a cat, or at least close to a cat. There are still some pieces missing, but they are not far off. And in a matter of minutes, Ellie was really starting to look like a cat with the mouth in place, the ears, the cat teeth, everything was there. It just needed to be attached a little extra with more skin adhesive along the edges. Ellie then tried something new. She mixed flour into the skin adhesive. This way, she could make sure that the prosthetic pieces would not look out of place when compared to her own skin. And now, when that mix was applied onto the edges of the prosthetics, a great little transition between prosthetic and skin was created. And then again, it was time for the coloring. This time, a lot of white. Like, a lot of white. But it would also work with different colors. Some people don't like the white. Some people might want a red cat or a black cat. Or maybe even a green cat. Either way, it was time for coloring. And just as we learned in a few previous chapters back, that darkness and that dark tone will bring out the shades. The shades of the cat face. Ellie then went on to mix these different colors in different places to make it all look as one.
she even found a tube-like contraption with colors meant for the hair, but she applied it onto her skin instead. The merchant at the market had called it hairspray color, and Ellie went on to use both the white shade and the brown, and just by pushing that little nostril down, she could get nice brown specks spread all over her skin. Then it was focus time again, as coloring of the nose was imminent. She then once again turned her attention to those brown tones to give a lot of depth to the mouthpiece. Many years ago, Ellie had received a sparkling box with strange colors inside and she never knew how to use them or for what. But now it all became so clear. Of course they were to color the eyes of her favorite cat. She applied those colors in three steps. The light brown, the dark brown and the solid black. She then had to use a tiny little pen of black and carefully apply color to something that people refer to as the waterline. And then with an even thinner pen she added a line on the absolute edge of her eyelid and then smudged that a little bit with a bigger pencil. She applied color to her lashes as well and then oh, she opened a box. A magic box of fake lashes that she could now apply to her own eyes. But even long before that lash glue had dried, Ellie felt she needed some more bling. She went on to apply rings and all kinds of things to those ears, making her look like a queen. And with more of that strange hairspray color, she emphasized the jawline and then turned her attention to gold solid gold color. It was expensive, yes. 24 karat gold color. Very expensive. But it highlighted the details of her amazing cat. And the more she applied, the more of a queen she became. An Egyptian cat queen. But in her dreams, Ellie was actually a cat queen risen from the dead. So she felt she needed to add additional elements to make her look like an Egyptian zombie classic. And boom! And with all those bandages, additional white and brown hairspray color, and a lot of bling, she had finally done it. Her transformation was complete. She was now an Egyptian cat goddess. Ellie kept gazing into the mirror, almost in awe of her creation, and she only wished that more people could see it and tell her what they felt about this. So there you go, the story of Ellie's transformation into an Egyptian cat queen. Next time we'll open a totally different book, and who knows where that adventure might take us. Thank you all for listening all the way. Now subscribe to make sure you don't miss the next one.